very, very good morning to everybody. I'm so delighted to be doing this session today with Justine Martin. My name's Nicola Graham. I'm your facilitator. And a very warm welcome to Painting My Journey with MS. We're going to have a lot of fun, a lot of chats, and uh, do some art together, which will be fantastic. So we like to start each of our programs with sorry, I'm going the wrong way, with an acknowledgement to country. So in the spirit of reconciliation, MS Limited acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Now, it's with great pleasure that I introduce you today to a very fabulous, dynamic, amazing woman, Justine Martin. And um, I want to just very briefly give a little bit of an introduction as to how Justine started um, with her art. So over 10 years ago, Justine was diagnosed with MS and she describes her world crashing around her that she was forced to spend most of her days alone, not leaving the house, not seeing people, and that for the first time in her life, she started to experience depression and anxiety. She was asking herself a lot of questions. How am I going to fulfill the rest of my life? What am I going to do with all of my time? How will I fill my days? And as Justine said, she's always wanted to contribute back to society and how is she going to do that now? So her neurologist in his or her wisdom said, pick a hobby, Justine. She'd always wanted to learn art. She'd been busy with career and kids and now she had an opportunity to do it. it. Took her about three months to garner the courage to go to her first class and to a studio, even though the, uh, the studio was owned by a friend of hers. She was petrified, but she went. And as they say, the rest of it is history. Justine is a entrepreneur. She's a very successful business owner. She's a mentor. She's a resilience coach and speaker. She's an author, a grandmother, an MS ambassador. And I'm going to hand over now to Justine. She can fill in the rest of the story as she creates. And I hope that you'll have the opportunity to create too. And um, as the session unfolds, be interesting to see what happens. And I'm here to take your questions. So thanks, Justine. Over to you. Thank you. Wow, what an introduction. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Justine and I'm sitting in my home studio uh, in Geelong in Victoria. So if you're joining us from other states, uh, this is where I pretty much live in this room. I'm going to give you a tour around. Excuse the mess. It's an artist workshop. So um, let's give you a spin. So lots of things are created in here. Um, including workshops for other people and classes and then we'll go through this way that's where we're going to be doing a little bit of work today and around through here so my journey with MS started when I was nine years of age um, my mum was diagnosed back in 1981 so there you go you can work out how old I am um, and she had um, her own health battles. She had uh, breast cancer at 27. She got diagnosed at 33 with MS and cervical cancer at 40 and lung cancer at 49. Um, and I became her primary carer uh, going through my uh, teens and was 26 when she passed away. So when I was experiencing vision problems back in uh, 2009 um, I went to the doctor and and asked um, you know could this be MS and was told no 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 got put on the merry-go-round as you guys know how hard it is to get diagnosed and then in March 2011 was diagnosed with the MS so one of my um, uh, problems is that I, I have cognitive issues and that I can't count properly uh, anymore. So when you're in the retail sector, and in my last job I was a program director for Jenny Craig, um, it's a bit of an issue when you can't count. And so I had to stop work. And my neurologist then said to me, you know, find a hobby. And as Nicola said, you know, it took me a while to walk through the art studio door. And when I did, I took to it like a duck to water. Uh, six months after 
um, starting to learn how to paint and draw, I sold my first painting for $300. And uh, I'd been a successful businesswoman in my previous life and thought, wow, I could actually make some money again and contribute back into society. Started donating lots of pieces that I'd create um, for auctions, fundraisers, because um, I couldn't afford to give the money uh, to a foundation, but I could give a $500 painting and it would sell for that. So it's just been a progression um, over the last nine years, 10 years um, in getting to this point. So I'm going to start a little bit of art today. I'm going to tell my journey as well as uh, do some drawing and then I'm going to do some painting. So how I would normally um, create is I'll see a photo, I'll see something in real life, I'll take a photo of it and then I'll print it off or keep it in my phone in a, in a folder um, of art ideas and then when I'm looking I can, I can print it off. But what I also do is some squiggle characters. Now, um, if you've got a pen and paper in front of you or a texter or something like that, you can definitely join along um, in this. So this is a little bit like, I don't know if you grew up with Mr. Squiggle, but it's a little bit like Mr. Squiggle. So feel free if you've got any questions um, to ask away and um, I can answer it as, as we go along. So just do a squiggly line through. It doesn't have to look like mine. Um, it can be totally different. And then we're just going to make some little creatures. This one's like a little Mr. Men. There we go, there's our first little one. What else can we see in here? Um, so lots of little feet on this one. Not quite sure what he is. They just flow out. I'm going to get a different colour to highlight this one. I'm drawing along with you, Justine, as I hope everybody else is. And I haven't mm -hmm. done this for ages and it's so it's so lovely it's to very allow very yourself to, yeah, to allow yourself to be playful, you know, to to have a go. I should um There we go. I did a little squiggle myself. Have you? I'd love yeah, to. Yeah, show you mine. It, it it was a squiggle like that, and then I looked at it and I thought, oh, it could be a crown, and then I thought, oh, it's the weight of a crown. Awesome, yeah. love it, love it. <laughs> That's really good. It's so nice to be allowed to to do this, Justine. It's always fun. This has always been my form of um, meditation. It has. I'm not one that can just sit there in, in the corner and go, um, and, and all of that. So to get in and to create in the studio, um, I can And sit. to get lost in it, can't you? You can just get lost in it. Yeah, that's right. And time as well. I'm just going to flick this one over. Actually, I'll just rip off. Put it over there. I'll make a mess. I'm and Linda saying, <laughs> Linda saying, this is like cartooning. It's a great start. Um, did is, you then go it? on to create an abstract piece? You can do. Um, so I'm going to do another one here. So something like this, if you were really 
looking to do abstract or similar, what you could do, then do with something like this is paint or colour in. So this is just quick at home. You could um, do it a lot more neater than what I'm doing right now. So art to me has pretty much saved me. Um, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, it's given me some purpose back in life. It um, and it's enabled me an outlet that when the days are dark that I can still make something beautiful. Well, beautiful in my eyes. I don't know about to, to many other people. We were just talking about um, prior to coming on camera about colour. And I love bright colours. And if you've seen any of my artwork, they're normally um, quite bright and vibrant. So you could go through here and um, just do little alternate squares. And what Justine's inspired me to um, to pop a bit more colour into my life as well, because uh, I was saying I have a very neutral wardrobe and uh, I need to snap out of it and get yeah. myself something red or pink or fabulous. So you can do you can do patterns and shapes in in these. So this is only quick here, but you could take a lot more time at home. And again, you can make other things um, into it as well as a suggestion. But let's go back and draw some more cartoon. Now, can everyone see these colours all right? If you could let us know, that would be great. Yes, we can. Thanks, Justine. And Justine, you got a, a Go For Gold scholarship, didn't you? I did. I did, yes. Um, back in about 2014, I think it was now. So the Go For Gold scholarship enabled me to set myself up in um, with art supplies. So I bought uh, some beautiful coloured pencils, an SLR camera to take photos of my work, some canvases, some paint brushes. Um, yeah, it, it was amazing. I encourage everyone uh, to enter into the Go For Gold. The first year I entered, I wasn't successful, but then I reapplied the next year and I was, um, yeah, it, it made a world of difference uh, for mm. me. So if you're sitting there thinking that you should enter, then please do. What have you got to lose? So, and if I something that you want to get into you know write down um things that you may need to to get started and linda's asking justine did you find your preferred style quickly i've experimented with soft pastels oil pastels paint and i can't decide you know what i don't have a preferred style I do so many different things if you hop on my website and it's down in the chat box at judstart.com.au and go through um, the gallery you'll see that there are so many different things um, I get bored if I stay on one particular uh, medium one particular style um, my brain doesn't quite work that way and I flip from one to the other there it's nothing for me to have like 12 15 different projects on the go at once so while one's drying um, I can be working on a different um, piece different medium different techniques and that on there I do love graphite um, I love the softness of graphite in the in the greys but then I really love inks and bright vibrant colours in the ink and I've actually made one of my ink paintings um, into a one-way vision uh, for the front of my house so if you again hop on my website or if you look on uh, Facebook under Just Art Justine Martin Artist you'll see that there's photos of what I've done to my house so the walls out the front of my house are Pretty much this colour and turquoise and lime green and uh, a dark 
dark charcoal. Uh, it all fits together. And out the front of my house, I have a, she's about five foot six high, um, big craft sculpture that I've made as well. So you can't miss my place. <laughs> I encourage you guys to get on and have a look at Justine's front of her house. It is stunning. You're really inspiring me to step out of my comfort zone, Justine. And um, and I'd, I'd like to join an art class my, myself. I think I'd really enjoy that. My mum was an artist and um, she did some really beautiful work. So surely it's in my genes somewhere buried deep. <laughs> It probably is. It's a recessive right. gene in me, but yeah. I just love the permission that you give us to go for it, because I yeah. think that can often hold us back, can't it? Where we think, oh, I'm not very good at this, or um, everyone can draw. create. Yeah, everyone can create, and uh, there's a lot of false belief out there that you, that you can't. Um, it's just a matter of practice. You know, we were all at school and we were all drawing and someone probably said to you one day, oh, that looks terrible or, you know, you can't do that when you can. So I now run um, art wellness classes to other people with disabilities and not just MSs, um, uh, any disability come in. And... Uh, you know, so many of them are like, I can't draw, I can't paint. And I'm like, yes, you can. And what they then create is absolutely amazing. Um, so we all work at our own pace in here and um, create up a storm. So I take classes of up to four people and I'm about to launch an online platform uh, where if you're sitting at home and you don't live in Geelong, um, and you feel that you want to have some instruction in, in painting and join a community aspect of it, uh, then hop on justart.com and register your interest because that'll be up and be up and running in the next couple of months. And there'll be different time slots throughout the day, and they'll be two-hour classes. So, um, you know, I'll go through things on, you know, helping you paint with certain mediums and obviously what you've got at home. But, you know, we're expanding um, with that as well. So, And Justin, you can get NDIS funding to join your yeah. class, can't you? Right. Yes. Fully covered under NDIS. If you want more details, then um, please get in contact. Um, just do you know what category it's funded under with NDIS? I must admit I find the different NDIS categories quite confusing. Yeah, it's funded under community access. Community access, great. Well, that's lovely to know that wherever our attendees are tuning in from in yeah. Australia, and in fact, that would be lovely if you guys want to pop in the question box where you're joining us from today. It'd be really nice to know where everybody is. Um, if you can take your attention off your drawing to do that at some point. Um, but nice to know you can join one of Justine's classes wherever you are as she goes online. That's been one of the benefits of the restrictions that we've had, hasn't it? That people have opened up to the idea of telehealth and doing things online. It has, because um, obviously I couldn't do face-to-face um tutoring last year and then went over onto zoom classes and uh that's where this idea has come from to help more of you rather than you know the 20 students that i have coming through the doors now that um to branch out and and do online uh classes so uh that'll be fun so anyway i've just done a little man I don't know if you can see, let me move the computer, little man there. So your imagination's uh, the limit on this. I like little faces, as you can see. Now I am, I am babbling through with a broken arm. So 
these aren't up to my normal standard. Um, you will have to uh, accept my apology on this one. So there's so many things that you can put on them. Like that. So what I'm going to do now is um, keep keep doing your little doodles and that at home with these. Um, if you want to take photos of them and then send them uh, to my Facebook page, by all means, let me have a look at what you've created. And if you want any feedback as well, um, by all means, send them through. And Justin, we've got people here. We've got Janine from Shepparton, Peter in Launceston. We've got Rosie in Coogee, Helen from Canberra, Diane in Mackay in North Queensland, Narita in Mornington, um, Lee is in is from Vincentia, Jervis. I've not heard of there. Hi, Lee, and um, Tracy from Maitland, but used to be in Geelong and um, Melanie from Geelong and uh, Melanie knows you she ah, said I told Justine I couldn't draw and she helped me create some beautiful paintings we've got Glenda from Mitchum in Victoria Elizabeth um, Lee um, and Port Arlington and more Melbourne people. So fantastic. Um, Juan Turner, that's Fiona. Uh, Painesville, uh, Victoria's from Painesville. So welcome everybody. Lovely, lovely to have you all online. It's nice to have a gist that we're all around Australia, which is really lovely. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, put my windows on so I can actually see what I'm doing, um, is I'm going to practice on here doing a drawing. And then I'm going to transfer it onto um, a canvas that I have um, ready to go. Now, I've in the last um, nine years um, have won quite a lot of awards uh, for my artwork. And if you'd said to me 10 years ago that that might have been the case, I would have laughed at you because I never did art uh, prior to this. Just let me pick up the studio dog and introduce you all. The pansy. Hello, so pansy. Say hi. Hello. So she's a, bit of a superstar because I've actually written a children's book, and uh, the children's book's all about inclusion. And pansy is the main character, aren't you? Yes, you are. Um, so she's like a, a a spoilt toddler, I suppose you could say. As soon as I get on any form of webinar or Zoom, uh, she wants to be a part of it. So the children's book that I've actually drawn, I'll give you a sneak peek. So the general public hasn't really seen this. It's off to the publisher this week. These are some of the pictures that I've done. So if you'd said to me 10 years ago that I would be a successful artist and author, I would have laughed at you. Um, I was sitting at home thinking, how was I going to spend the rest of my life? What was I going to do? And just started doing scribbles on a page. Then I went off, like I said earlier, um, to my first art studio. And then um, I enrolled in a community course um at a neighborhood center uh doing art and it, it's just gone from there so now i teach in the studio we're up to four days a week and i'm about to employ well i've employed staff to come in and help me uh, for that i've got a gallery down in cafe zoo in drysdale where i can hang up to 40 pieces of work there's a gallery here in my home that i open up to the public and the spoilt dash hound growling at me. Um, I've got, I'm a resilience consultant and um, guest speaker uh, on that. There's so much that is going on. Um, so the next step was uh, writing some books. And when I broke my arm, I'm like, well, I can't paint at the moment. What am I going to do? And so that's where I wrote the story. And then all these pictures. I've done since the beginning of the year. So um, they're all nice and bright, as I said. Um, I don't do beige very well at all. 
They are beautiful pictures, Justine. I love them. Thanks. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a picture of Pansy. I'm just going to do a rough, a rough um, drawing of this, so then I can transfer it over onto um, the the main one. Uh, so it's just a, a quick outline. Just to get in the hang of it. Uh, so Pansy I'm actually having made into stuffed toys as well, just in my spare time. She Definitely is becoming a celebrity, Justine. She's got her own Instagram account now. So if you want to follow her on Instagram, uh, she's pansy underscore and underscore uh, friends. That is. Or you can find me on Instagram at um, juz, so J U Z T underscore A R T. And I'd love to hear from you and what you've created. Yeah, I've, I've drawn her like this before, but um, I gave her five legs last time and I was sitting in the studio and I looked across one day and I went, there's something wrong with that painting. What is wrong with that painting? And it was because I'd, I'd given her an extra leg. So there she is there. So what we're going to do now, I've also got a colour in book coming out. There she is there. So there's a colour in book coming out, which will be released in um October so if you're interested in purchasing um Pansy's books uh again just register on my Facebook or the website and um I can put you on the wait list as soon as it's published so what I've got here is I've just got some canvas paper and um it's I've actually painted the background just with white paint although they look white the sheets then they're actually not they're cream um, so I've just used uh, the uh, Atla brand now I'm going to put an apron on because I tend to wreck all my clothing that I do so it's gone quiet because I'm concentrating is that what you're doing <laughs> It's so nice to be quiet, just uh, doing a just sketch. Do it. Now, you don't want to see me, you want to see this. So I'm going to turn it around and just tip it down for the moment. Move some stuff out of the way. Move my cupper out of the way because I tend to put the uh, paintbrushes in it, which is never good. I love how when you start, a person starts drawing, Justine, you start to really look at things properly and in a, a new way, don't you? You do, you do. And sometimes we draw what we don't actually see. Oh, I, I'm doing it as we speak. I'm making assumptions and, and drawing the line. And then I think it's not actually like that, Nick. You're not looking at it properly you know draw it how you actually see it not what you think yeah and that's the beauty about using an eraser that you can rub it out And let's 
go through there. So that's given me something to start on. I'm going to do some painting today. So does anyone have any questions? Oh, I've got so engrossed in what I was doing, Justine, that I haven't been looking at anyone's questions at all. I've been a very neglectful facilitator. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, so just some comments. You know, everybody's saying how gorgeous um, Pansy is, and Narita's saying, you know, how how much kids like bright colours. Um, Linda's asking, is the MS Art Show still online? If so, is there a People's Award? Yes, Linda, I'm not the best expert on the MS Art Show, but it is online this year. You can still upload an entry. Um, I'm not they sure what week, award. Don't they? I think they closed this week, the entries. Yeah. Um, put three entries in uh, for it. And I'm not, sh I'm not sure what awards are there. You, th there's the uh, Barry. The awards are, there's four awards, but things this year aren't for sale. Mm -hmm. So in previous years, pre-COVID, um, you could sell your work, but this year it's just a virtual. So if you go to our web website, Linda, you can certainly um, upload an entry, and that would be fantastic. Helen's asking what sorry Helen's asking what size is your canvas? Uh, so this is just a A3 pad and I'll show you I can get the paper that I use. So I obviously use artist quality, uh, professional artist quality. You can get cheaper ones. Um, I'm using Canson. So this pad here, um, I think it cost me about $28 for the 10 sheets. Um, but you can buy uh, cheaper quality. Now this is a this is canvas paper. So there's different types of paper that you can paint on. So um, you don't want to use photocopy paper. That's only in 90 GSM, whereas this one is 290 GSM. So it's thicker. It'll hold the paint. Um, if you were doing something like watercolour, watercolour starts at 300 GSM and goes up um, to nearly, I think, 700 GSM from memory. So it's like thick cardboard, so it can hold the water on there. I've got it taped down um, because when I'm putting the white wash on underneath uh, so it doesn't ripple and it stays nice and flat and that's called stretching it, um, stretching it out. So I don't think you can see him but or her, but she's on there. Can you see that one now? Yes, we can. Yeah, so I'm going to start painting. I'll put out paint now. I never use black. Um, black's not a colour that you should actually use, uh, even though there looks to be black in your painting. So this is Payne's Grey. You can see that. And Payne's Grey has a blue reflective in it. So it's not actually, it doesn't actually look grey. It looks more black but it's got a blue hue through it, which will reflect the light better than black. Black becomes very, very dull and dark um, and you want to reflect the light back off things. So let me just find one of my brushes, one of my favourite brushes. Justin, Linda's asking, when adding colour, do you start just anywhere or do you work, for example, from the top down? Okay, so I work, and it, this is whether I'm doing painting or drawing, I work from, now I'm right-handed, I work from top left across to down. But remembering if you're doing something um, on a smaller canvas and that you can turn the canvas around as well, and I work in all different positions, I'm a bit limited at the moment with my arm on, on what I can what movements I can do. So I will turn the canvas um, around. Just be mindful of not putting your hand over wet paint because then you have it absolutely everywhere and that's not what you want. Now, here's some. And then we've got, um, Janine said, any reason why you didn't just draw straight onto your canvas? Or did you I copy like your that. original? I like to get the flow and, and position what I want as well. 
Um, sometimes I just draw it straight on, just depending uh, what it is. And so here we go. I'll put a bit of water in. I like to water it down a bit. Um, uh, okay, here we go. So I've just picked up a bit of white with this. And I often um, blend on the paper. Try and get some smooth edges. So the one, the painting that I'm doing today, this one um, will be sent off to the stuffed toy manufacturer because I'm having Pansy made into stuffed toys just as another extension um, in selling things for my business. So we've got an ear you yep. may not know the answer to this, but Elizabeth is asking, can you do more than one art therapy course? I'm assuming that means through the NDIS. Yeah, you can, depending on what your goals are on there. Um, but yeah, you can, and how much funding you've actually got as well. So it all comes down to your goals. Um, what your funding's like in community access or community participation. And Claire's um, asking, Justin, why is the canvas taped down? It's taped down because um, it stops it from rippling when it was really wet with the white paint. and it keeps it nice and flat when it's drying. Otherwise it will dry with little um, ripples all the way through it. And that's not what you want. And, and Lee is um, letting me know exactly where Jervis Bay is. So it's on the south coast of New South Wales in an area where there are dolphins and visiting whales. I'm jealous, Lee. I am very, very jealous. And Claire has yeah. said, have you got Oh, sorry, Nicola, I'm You're sure going. I know Lee. Um, I'm sure she's in, I run an, um, a group on Facebook for people with MS called Supporting Each Other with MS in Australia, and I'm sure Lee's on that group. Lee, are you in that group? Um, type in and let us know, please. Um, and Claire has said, do you have a paint palette to your right? I have. I work on tiles. They wash off really easily. You can leave it sit on there and dry and it will just scrape straight off. So that's what I'm working on. I've tried plastic. Um, it's a lot harder to get it off the plastic. On tiles, it's so much easier. So something that I picked up along the way. You can put this being acrylic paint. You can put a drying retarder in there when it's hot and that'll stop it from drying quite so fast because acrylic paint dries uh, very fast. Claire has said, I love your initiative to come up with so many different streams of income. 
And then Johnny's asked an interesting question. Justine, let me find it again. Sorry, I'm kidding. That's like I'll I'm keeping you all in suspense. Why. I'll explain why I've got so many different um, things of income. It's been uh, a big drive of mine to get off the disability pension and become independent again. And the art wellness classes have enabled that. Um, but when I broke my arm in a fall, um, if I can't paint uh, and or I'm having a reef flare or a relapse with the MS, then my income actually stops. Now, in the last eight years, um, I've had three heart surgeries, so therefore couldn't work when that was happening. And then I've had all at the same time melanoma, lymphoma and leukaemia. And that made it extremely difficult. And I couldn't actually um, even hold a paintbrush at that time. So I developed finger painting and I've done quite a lot of work with finger painting, but um, my income stopped again. So I sat and thought, well, I need to make an income stream that is uh, residual income. And so the book sales, um, the soft toys, I'm bringing out children's linen um, as well with, with pansy um, being the feature uh, and my frogs. I love green tree frogs and I actually have three of them. Uh, so uh, this is all adding to um, yeah, my, my long-term income stream and being, you know, financially independent uh, from the government. So It's very inspiring, Justine. You know, to pay tax again. People think I'm mad because I want to pay tax and it's like, well, then I'm actually contributing back and um, I feel like, you know, that's my, my goal and my mission uh, to do that. So... Um, Lee's saying, Justin, you're definitely inspirational. Good on you for keeping at it. That's Lee from Jervis Bay. Tracy said, I use dinner plates that I got from an op shop to put yeah. my paint on. And Johnny's asking, what did you do in terms of professional development? Now, there's a big question. Um, prior to being diagnosed? Is that what he's asking? I'm not sure. That's all he's his asked. Maybe you can elaborate on on that. In terms question. of art, you're saying in terms of art. In terms of art? Um, yeah. This is so an interesting I, story, isn't it, Justine? It is. So I've done quite a few classes, um, courses. So I did one through Oxygen College. I was in the Social Support Day program for MS Australia. And just my my past experience in the wellness industry, I've bought in um, to the classes. So I've got lived, learned experience uh, with it. So I don't know if you can see, I'm actually blending on the canvas with the white. And I say canvas, even though it's paper. Um, but it does suck up the paint. That it does. We need more. So this is quite expensive, this paint. It's professional quality. Um, if you're just starting out and you're looking for some um, decent paints just to start with, Montmartre, which are available in a lot of the um, $2 stores, they do um, okay paints to, to start with without having to spend quite a lot of money because uh, that's the thing with, with a hobby like this is that it can get quite expensive um, and again that's another reason why to go for the go for gold scholarship because it can definitely help you 
last year during COVID, we I did some free online art classes and we use things like coffee uh, to paint with or tea, red cordial. Um, you can mix up any of that. You can use cotton buds to put it all in as well. So, Was that to use the coffee as and the tea as a, as a a colour as, yeah. as a paint. Yeah. That would yeah, have smelt nice if you were doing that. Love the smell well, of coffee. I'm actually allergic to caffeine. So it um it did smell nice. I just had to be careful not to get too close to it. Okay. Any other questions? Sorry, I'm not looking, Justine, I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Helen said, did you ground the page before you started painting? That's obviously an artistic term, ground. I don't know what that means. Um, no. Oh, ground, you... I did that ground. Um, yes, so I did white paint, if that's if that's the question. And it's got three layers of white paint uh, on it first to fill the negative space. I quite often don't put busy backgrounds in my paintings. I make the um, the subject stand out by having a crisp white background. I noticed, I went to see the Sunlight and She Oak exhibition um, on in Melbourne. And we've got yep. the French Impressionists as well on uh, currently. We're very lucky. Um, and you could take a support worker to get to one of those exhibitions and that would come out of community funding as well. Community access. That's really good to know. We'll just give him a bit of a belly. How old is Pansy, Justine? She's three. Oh, she's still a baby. She's three and a terror. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, loves her. everyone loves her at the studio when they come in, um, come for classes. And of course, my grandkids absolutely adore her as well. So they call, um, I've heard a name for Dachshunds, which is land sharks. Have you heard that? Yes, because they are. <laughs> are they? Yeah. Are, are they pretty fierce? Because she looks really, you know, chilled. Um, she's actually well behaved today in regards to if someone's walking past out the front, uh, she will bark like you wouldn't believe. She's very protective of me. But um, if a dog came up to her in the street, she'd be hiding behind me. So she's all bark and no bite. Yeah, she's got little dog syndrome, as they do. So as you can see, I moved the canvas around quite a bit. Now, I don't paint much on an easel anymore. Uh, because I can't hold my arm up with the MS. So you adapt on, on what you can actually do with your disabilities. Blending some colour here. Okay. So I'm just taking some of the white into the Payne's grey. There we go, it's a bit shiny. And um, just to add some highlight on here. 
So Justin, with this technique, do you work from dark to light? Yeah, so acrylic paint, you work from dark to light and watercolour, you work from light to dark. Okay. They're opposites. So you put some highlights in, in that. And I like doing it, like blending when it's, when it's still uh, wet and blending on the canvas. Um, I don't mix my own colors. I started off just working with primary colors and then mixing them, uh, but I don't tend to do that anymore. I still have the big one litre bottles for that, but um, I don't tend to do it. I've got every colour under the rainbow now uh, for it. So if you're a purist, you can still uh, mix your own colours. Now you should never leave your paintbrushes in the water. Do you know why that is, Nicola? Does it ruin the bristles or something? Or um, yeah, but it'll actually split all the paint off the paintbrush, and then as you're painting, so the water gets in and swells. As you're painting, it'll then drop the painted cover all into your painting, and you've got a right royal mess then to to try and clean up. Okay, so we've got her there. I'm just not liking one side of her. So I'll put a bit more out. Now, the secret with paint is put little bits out at a time because you can always um, you can always put more out. You can't get it back in the tube if it's already out. So she just needs a bit more through here. Any other questions? Yes, let me have a look. Well, Lee's got a comment, so I'll just share that. Um, mm -hmm. And sorry, Lee, I don't know whether you're male or female, so he or other, so I'll say he, she, saying, I would like to get into painting more, but I don't have a space set aside for it. It takes energy to set up at the main table and then to pack it all ag away again. I'll try to find a place in the Shoal Haven, where I can just go and paint and then leave. Um, had a place in Brisbane to do this, but not down here. And yeah, I can appreciate that, Lee. It does take effort to set up, doesn't it? And it's a real luxury to have a studio. And maybe that would be wonderful if you can find a place locally. And that also what does you give you a chance do, to... Lee, what you could actually do is get a support worker in. And that support worker would set up your space on your kitchen table for you and um, then uh, can pack it up for you as well. So not many people realise that they can do that with support workers. So then you can paint from home. And Victoria's asking, can you buy the stand that you're using to paint on? You've got like a little desk easel there, haven't you? I actually had this made for me. So it was three bits of um, of marine ply and just had it made. So if you know someone that is handy or if you've got um, access to, to wood people, these will actually be available um, at some stage on my website for sale once the um, art classes uh, start up, the online ones. But you can buy, and I'll show you these, where if I put them. You can buy these. So these are a easel that you can paint on. Mm, like a deck chair and, and you can change the angle. Yeah, that's right. And 
there's you can change this to to hold the painting as well these are about twenty dollars um, these ones were so you can get those and they work really well as you can see it's got paint all over it they get used quite often here in the studio just depending on um, what you like to paint on okay what I'm going to quickly do is make a bit of noise and I I'm just looking to see if it's there I'll turn you around I'm going to dry it so if you've got a hair dryer if you've got a hair hair dryer at home or an old hair dryer you can definitely do this and this speeds it up Dawn's share in the comment that um, a local men's shed is a great place to have a drawing or a painting board made. What a what a great idea. Yeah, I missed all of that before. Sorry. And Dawn's made a comment that I think is a great advice that a local men's shed is a good place to have a drawing or a painting board made. That's right, would be. Okay, so now I'm just using this colour here, which is uh, one of Riot Art and Crafts um, brands of paint. Paper towel is always a good thing to dry your brushes off first. Now there's lots of um, disabled art shows that you can enter in Victoria and for any ability. So there is the MS Art Show. There's also the Connected Art Exhibition, which is the State Trustees. And there's some really good prize money uh, with that one. And there's another one for ADEC. Um, they have one which this year I think is online as well. And then there's Inclusive Network, they have another one. So there's uh, lots of different places that you can enter your art. All right, now this paint is quite thin. There's not much pigment in it. Uh, so it does require a couple of um, uh, coats. But in saying that, it dries quite quick as well. Do you think Pansy knows how famous she's becoming? What a celebrity. Um, yeah, I think so. She's only going to get more famous. So I've, um, I was nominated for 11 business awards. Uh, in the last couple of weeks through one organisation and four through another. So um, all up uh, 15 business awards and I've made it into the finals for nine in one, one organisation and four in the other. So um, absolutely honoured and, and blown away uh, by that. And there'll be uh, more media exposure and and things in regards to that I've just um, employed someone to do my PR because uh, the business has just grown uh, so much I also have another 
business that's in the pipeline that my artwork is going on big decals for caravans, camper vans to help people identify uh, their vans in um, holiday parks because of memory issues. Uh, so you may see um, my, well, hopefully you see my artwork on the back of some caravans uh, going through uh, the, the town that you live in. Justin, I love, I read that on your... I did yes. what I told you not to do. <laughs> I read that on your website about the um, caravan decal stuff and I love it and I can just imagine some of your artwork traveling around Australia have you thought of some designs that you're going to do or yeah, painting yeah. um I do lots of frogs and so if you have a look on there you'll see that there's frogs over wheel arches and there's um a big turtle and yeah there's there's be lots of dragonflies i'm also making them smaller that they can go on mobility scooters and wheelchairs and walkers uh, um as well so it'll be a bit like um pimp my ride <laughs> i love that now you i don't know if you can actually see but if I hold it that way, you might be able to. The page has actually started to ripple a bit because it's wet, and that's one of the reasons why um, it's it's taped down. Because otherwise, it just, it's too hard to paint on. So, Justin, a few people have been typing in just to say congratulations. Great to hear you've been able to achieve so much, and well done. And you're very inspiring. And so forth. So. so I've written a couple of, um, in the process of writing a couple of books on my journey and I, I'm co-author in a book at the end of the year that's called Release the Shackles and that's talking about my cancer journey while having MS as well. So um, it is quite rare to have three primary cancers at once and, um, and live to tell the tale as well. In regards to it, so Justine, did you stay painting throughout your treatment, which I imagine would have been quite debilitating? Or I did, and that's how, how I managed. Yeah, I discovered that I could finger paint um, because of the mixed cryoglobulinemia that I had. Um, it was extremely difficult to hold a paintbrush. I had all these lumps sticking out of my joints, a little bit like rheumatoid arthritis. And um, I kept getting tagged in this woman's work from uh, America, her name's Iris Scott, and she finger painted oils. And I went, oh, I wonder if I could do that with acrylics. Anyway, I gave it a crack and I could. And, um, a lot of the decals that I'm actually selling were done by finger painting. So, and I, I love finger painting. I love the fact that if you come up against an obstacle, Justine, you seem to take the approach of, okay, how could I do this differently? How else can I do this? So that's the resilience factor of it, um, you know, overcoming the adversity. And now I help other people uh, with that as well, with my resilience consulting and and um, I'm just developed and it'll be out by the end of the year as well, an eight week course on how to overcome adversity and gain resilience in your own life to help other people. Um, you know, just because I became disabled didn't mean that my world just stopped. And, you know, I'm always looking for new opportunities and stuff that I can do. When I was going through chemo, I would take in um, things to do in hospital towards, as, as I got better um, and the chemo started to work and I could use my hand, I would take drawings in and I remember one occasion sitting there and I'd just drawn a little seahorse and the woman next to me um, was going through chemo for breast cancer 
and um, she wanted to purchase the little seahorse that I'd done. She'd been in, she'd done a little bit of art over the years as well and she'd never considered actually taking stuff in because there's so many hours that you're just sitting there doing nothing and um, to keep your mind occupied. So um, she wanted to buy it off me and I, I ended up just giving it to her. I wasn't going to make money out of her misfortune. So um, yeah, I'd always take something in, in to do. I'm about to explore digital art. Um, I've bought myself a new iPad. So when I am feeling that I can't get in here. Um, and as you know, Nicola, at the moment, I'm actually um, having a relapse um, in my right leg. And that's the first new stuff I've had in a couple of years. And so I've got an iPad now that I'm learning digital art. So if I wanna stay in bed or I wanna stay on the lounge, I can do that without creating much mess. So if you've got an iPad at home, um, look at getting, it's called Procreate is the app. And there's plenty of online courses that you can do uh, in people helping you or even just um, YouTube. Don't discredit um, learning stuff on, as I call it, the University of YouTube. There's so much stuff on there that you can, that you can learn from. Now you'll see that this paintbrush, someone's left it in the water. So it's dropping stuff and it's already dropped stuff on here. So I'm going to see if I can get it off. If I can't, I'll just paint over it black and I can't. Like. So we just paint it in. And that was the thing about dropping stuff. When I was going through the chemo, I lost my eyelashes and I'd be painting away and there'd be eyelashes on the paper and I'd just paint them over. So there's, there's some of my paintings that actually have a bit of DNA of me <laughs> in them. Oh my God, well, you know. I think that's such a, such a constructive idea to when you're having a treatment to take some artwork or something in that keeps you uplifted, keeps you in that good space um, because it can be very easy to soak up the the atmosphere in a hospital, can't it, of, of fear and of um, of trepidation and of sorrow and and, and other That's things as well. Yeah, so, you know, you're there and people have got tubes out of them at the, in the cancer day ward. Um, but, you know, prior to me having the cancers in 2016-17, um, I was on Ty Sabri, so... Um, once every four weeks, I would go and sit there for, you know, four to five hours having that infused. And then, you know, time to me is the most precious commodity on the planet. Um, you can't buy it, reuse it um, or sell it. And so, you know, choose how you spend it wisely and with who. And I use that time to, yeah, create um, artwork and, and, sell it you know sell it for a better better future uh for myself but you know the main reason why i started was just to fill up my days and to give me something to do and you know sometimes i'll create something and go wow did i actually did i actually do that where did that come from and you know the biggest honor that i can you know, have is when someone rings me up to buy a piece or wants a piece commissioned uh, for them. And, and that happens quite often. And, you know, for people to part with their hard-earned money uh, to hang my artwork on the wall is just um, mind-boggling. So such an honour. I think your, your art brings a lot of joy and um... Justine, I yeah. know some people who own your pieces and they're a source of great pride and, and joy. Trace is saying, I'd love to see your finger painting as sometimes when I have problems holding a brush or the shapes, it could be a way to keep up doing my art. So I don't know if you're able you to share any. Now? Would you like me to do some now? I can do some quick finger painting now. So here's it out. There you go. So I've got the eyes to do and bits and other pieces on there, but um when she's dry she'll get done but how about i do some quick finger painting i think that what would be would great like what would you like me to finger paint 
Okay, come on then, Tracy. You've you asked for it, so um, here's your opportunity I'm to. Uh... I'm just going to get a canvas. Um, I'm going to pop in some ideas, guys, of what you might like. Justine to finger paint, or we could leave it to her. Oh, oh. <laughs> Tracy was saying, um, I like your dragonfly in the grass painting, and Janine said a frog, and Lee said a whale and a baby. Oh. I've got That's a ambitious. whale, actually. Where's the whale one? Good idea. We'll do the whale. And I don't have to. Oh. Great idea. How about I finish this one? Fab. This is all finger painted so far. And lots of people are saying they love the dog. Peter's asking, oh. how how does an artist know when the work is finished? <laughs> That's a million dollar question. <laughs> um, sometimes less is more. Um, you know, it's quite easy to overpaint. Um, the beauty about acrylic paint, however, this one's got dust on it. Um, the beauty about acrylic paint is that you can you can repaint it. The difference between oils and acrylic, um, oils take forever to dry, whereas acrylic will dry within um, a couple of hours. I'm just giving this a It's been sitting there for so long, it's dusty. So I'm just giving it a bit of a clean. Whilst you do that, I'll just read out a comment that Lee's typed in, which I think is really, really lovely. Um, and he's saying it's a fine balance. Sorry, she is saying it's a fine balance, isn't it? Keeping occupied, keeping your mind off physical challenges, pushing oneself a bit having a relapse, how much to push oneself, how much to be careful, avoid stress and perhaps a relapse. I do admire Justine's guts and determination to keep on creating and running a business to boot. And I think we're all in agreement on that, Lee. Oh, thank, thank you, you Lee. Thank you for typing it. Yeah, it's lovely feedback, lovely comment. Okay, I'm just going to put some gloves on. So I use surgical gloves that are latex free because I'm allergic to latex. And we'll get some colour. A friend of mine did a, a stained glass window of a whale tail and it was just stunning. Yeah, really lovely. So I'm just pouring out some paint on the palette here. Now I've won some some prizes doing speed finger painting, believe it or not. I've entered in like live painting contests. They're always they're always fun. I'm just trying to find the colour. It's purple. Okay. So I've got some colour on here. So I make big um, cutouts for fences as well. Wherever I can put my art, I do. Now the thing with finger painting is make sure that 
you've got a rag to wipe your fingers to change the colour. Okay. So a couple of questions coming in here um, yeah. and I'll read them all out and then you can comment on them, Justine. So we've got, um, what's your vision for this finished painting from Peter and was the background also done by finger painting from mm -hmm. Rosie and what needs to be done to finish it by Peter and Lee saying she's definitely going to get her pencils and paper out again. You've really in inspired her. Um, so the vision for this, uh, this was actually finger painted oh, quite a few years ago now and it was just the background and I kept looking at it going, oh, I don't like it, don't like it, something else needs to go on there. I absolutely love whales. Um, so I thought, oh, well, I'll put a, a whale over it, a whale, whale tail over it. Um, I'm trying to make this look three-dimensional popping out of the page um, or off the canvas, which I know that it doesn't at the moment and it's a long way from being um, finished. So it's just a matter of building up, up the layers um, on this. Down the bottom here, it'll have white, a white wave and white splashing up and then I'll actually flick some white paint um, onto it as well. I like the um, earthiness of just getting your fingers in the paint and just sticking it straight on the canvas and the fact that you're not having to manipulate a brush but it's straight off your your hand that looks like a really nice way to work and I notice you, you don't work from a picture or anything Justin, no. it's all from your head so, yeah um, sometimes I do um, if it's a new subject and I haven't drawn them um, before I'll work off a reference, um, which is why I have my own frogs. So frogs feature a lot in my artwork and um, because of copy, copyright infringement, um, I actually went and got my own Australian green tree frogs, um, which I love to bits. Um, but yeah, no, a lot of it's just straight out of my head. I'll do an outline and then the colour just um, comes out of me straight onto it. Um, this will probably have far more block colour over it and then these colours will come back through so I'll scrape bits off once um, they're dry. So, although it's a mess at the moment, there will be a block colour over the top which will be um, more than likely uh, the Payne's grey or um, a lighter grey as well. But I'll put the block colours down underneath and then um, put the grey through the top. And Peter's saying, Justin, can you see the finished outcome in your mind before you try to create it? Um, a lot of the times, yes, but I've, I've learnt um, that what's in my mind doesn't necessarily come out on the canvas the way that I want it to and that used to make me really frustrated when it didn't. Sometimes, actually a lot of the time, it comes out better on the canvas than what's in my mind. Um, so I just go with the flow now um, of it. Um, something might turn out and I'm like, oh, how did I do that? And then try and... Um, uh, do it again so that's always a challenge um, but I am one of these people that I can go to a painting and work out um, how it's done just by by looking at it and can break it down in my mind into the layers of of what what's actually been done and how it's been created I love watching that when you watch Ando or some of the other portrait yeah. painters and you see they see colours there that I, I can't see and you and yet it all comes together to create something really amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um prior to having uh acrylic nails put on, I 
I used to paint without gloves on, um, but when you've got fingernails, um, it makes it a bit difficult. If I'm in a speed contest, well then I don't worry about the gloves, they're, they're too hard. But they're always, it's always fun. And you know, painting should be fun, you know, it's an expression of yourself. Don't take it all so, you know, seriously. Put paint onto canvas. What's the worst that can happen? You you repaint over it, and and that sometimes happens. I'm like, oh, I don't like that, and I'll just get a base color and um, I'll start over it again. I love that with acrylics, Justin. That you can do that. It seems to be quite a forgiving medium. It, definitely, definitely, and it, and because it dries so quick as well. Um, it's great. Whereas, you know, if you're working with oils and you put them on thick, it takes forever, um, forever to dry. And I think, you know, what is the worst thing that can happen? Just enjoy the process and do it. I know I inhibit myself by thinking, oh, I want it to come out right. And, and actually, I love the permission you're giving us to just get on and give it a go and enjoy the process. Don't That's be taken right. too seriously. No, no, not at all. And you know, some of the, the best pieces that I've done have been mistakes. <laughs> so something will have um, happened and that's led me to a new technique or um, a new subject. And I'm like, wow. That looks really, really good. How did I do that? And then I can, you know, reciprocate it again um, into other paintings. So, you know, if I hadn't have got um, the mixed cryoglobial anemia, I would never have learned how to finger paint. It wasn't on the radar whatsoever. Whereas now finger painting features a lot in, in my works. So even now, um, even though I can hold a paintbrush, I still love getting my fingers into it and just creating um, you know, raw, um, powerful pieces uh, from it. So um, this one's drying a little bit now. Um, you can get pellet knives and pellet knife paint. Um, you can use just household objects and, and paint with that. You don't need expensive equipment um, to paint. You don't even need canvases. You can paint um, on just plywood. I've done ink on plywood before. Uh, there's so many different things that you can use. Like we said before, coffee, tea, cordial, straight cordial, um, you can paint with that. Um, a biro, just a normal biro pen, you can do some amazing drawings with shading just with biro pens. Um, if you're on Facebook, I run a group called Get My Art Recognised with 22,000 people um, across the world in it and um, pop your pieces up on there if you've created some stuff, tag me in it and I can have a look. If anyone's done any work and they, they want some feedback on um, they're stuck and they don't know what to do next, well, by all means, just inbox me um, or email me through the website and the link is uh, just, uh, justart.com.au with a Z, not an S. And I'm only too happy um, to give you some feedback um, on, on your work. But if you're also looking for an online platform uh, to create some art with other like-minded people, we'll again register on my website and um, I'll let you know as soon as the classes are up and running. So are there any other questions? Um, well, Maria's asked something, I think you have answered it already, but do you paint with any other medium? And I think you've pretty much said you'll do anything. <laughs> I will. So let me give you a tour here. Uh, so I've got acrylics. Um, I use a thick acrylic paint with an impasto in it. So uh, I can't open some of these because I'm a broken arm. Um, these are really thick. So they don't, they've got an impasto, so it's quite blobby and thick. Um, I do watercolours, I do watercolour, uh, water inks, I do alcohol inks, um, I do charcoal, 
graphite, pastel, um, yeah, pretty much everything. Um, the only thing I've yet to start, and I've got them and I'm busting to do it, um, are oil paints. And I bought them just before um, I broke my arm at Christmas. So uh, they're not as forgiving as what acrylic paint is. So that'll be my next venture, probably um, the beginning of next year. I know that seems a while away, but I have a list of projects a mile long uh, to do between now and then. And that's fil finishing illustrating the children's book, the first of the children's books. And I've got to have 3,000 words finished by the end of August for another book called Release um, the Shackles. And then I'm finishing off the Resilience course and I've got a couple of books coming out um, to coincide with the Resilience course. So there, there's lots to keep me occupied uh, before I pick up a brush to do some oil paint. Um, but the oil paints that I've got are water-based as well. So they're not quite as pungent in smell as um, uh, traditional oil painting. So yeah, I love textured work with, with black ink pens, um, but again, I've been limited with that with my arm. Um, I do a lot of stippling work, so stippling in dots, fine, fine thousands and thousands and thousands of dots, and you'll see them um, in the gallery on my website. Justin, thank you so much. I know that you've inspired myself and all our people attending today from all the comments they've said. Tracy's kind of summed it up really nicely in a, in a, in a comment and I'll just read it out for everybody. She said, um, that's how I feel with the MS. If I didn't get MS, then I never would have got into art or been game enough to renovate my home or driven up and down the East Coast. With getting into art, I see so many colours and amazing patterns in nature. And Peter and many others are saying, thank you, great session. And I just encourage people to look at your website, the Jazz Art website, which is the links in the chat and uh, join an art group and maybe join one of Justine's art group if that appeals to you as well. I'll just write the um, link in there again. Uh, yep. for those that can Lovely. And if you can read it out as well so that people, if they listen to this recording, either on your website or on ours, Justine, then people have got it there as well. So it's www.juzartart.com.au. So just art. And the just art is actually from my first and last name. So when when you have a look at it, it's all kind of... um. Uh, it in. So if you if you can't remember it, um, just type in Justine Martin artist, and um, I come up everywhere on Google as well. So, but like I said, if you if you want me to have a look at some of your work and and give you some critiquing on it, um, by all means, uh, shoot me an email or an inbox and some photos, and um, I can give you that feedback. So lots of thank yous coming in from everybody, Justine and Tracy said next time she's in Geelong visiting family, she'll come and visit your studio. Narita thinks you must have more than 24 hours in your day and, sh and clearly you do. Victoria saying thanks and Fiona, thanks heaps. Um, so lots of messages from everyone. I'm going to close the webinar now. Reluctantly, guys, because I've really enjoyed hanging out with Justine and watching her paint and draw and starting to understand how vital and how important art has been in Justine's journey to, to health and how inspiring it's been. And people are saying how much they love the finger painting and, and just that that whole permission to do, just to do it, to, to get on and, and and do it. So big thanks, Justine, from us. I know you're not feeling 100% today. And again, that's just an indication of how you get on and, and do things. So big thanks. You're Bye, welcome. Everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye for now. Enjoy your art and be inspired. Um, just check in the last couple of questions and they're all just thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Everyone's loved it. Thanks, Janine. Uh, thanks from Janine and from Tina and and Elizabeth and Victoria, etc. Thanks, guys. Bye for now. Take care. Bye.